This is section 4.3, trigonometric functions of angles. In the previous section, we were talking about trig functions of real numbers. Now we're going to be looking at it specifically from the angle direction. Also in the previous section, we talked about points on the unit circle, and we knew that if we knew the x and the y coordinates of the point on the unit circle, then we could figure out all six of our trig functions based on our x and y values. Now we're going to talk about what happens when we're actually given a point that is not on the unit circle. How can we find it is, it's associated with this angle? How can we find it's associated trig values? Okay. Now if you recall from the previous section, the way we calculated the x and the y here was to drop down, make a right triangle, and then that allowed us to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length of each side. Well, we're going to do sort of the same thing here. If we're given some point over here that is not on the unit circle, we can drop down and make a right triangle. Okay, now the other thing that we know is that this small triangle and this large triangle are similar triangles because they have three angles in common. Both triangles have theta here. Both of them have a right triangle here. And even though I don't know what this angle is, I know since two of my angles are the same, I know the third angle must be the same because they all have to add up to 180. And if we know that we have similar triangles, then the length of each side is proportional. So it, we can calculate the length of the sides on this triangle, and therefore we can find the propor proportional lengths on the other two sides. Okay, so that all said, how do we actually, how do we do this? Okay, so let's say that we have a point P of X, Y, it's any point on the terminal ray. It doesn't, so now we don't specifically have to be on the unit circle, okay? And then the radius of a circle that we could draw around this, okay, through this point, is the square root of x squared plus y squared. And this, if you take the standard form of a circle that is centered at the origin, it is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Our unit circle specifically has a radius of 1, but if we're talking about any other circle, we just use r squared. If you solve this for r and radius has to be positive, you get this. So that's exactly where that comes from. It is simply your circle formula solved for r. Okay, so we can figure out our, our radius based on this. And then, how do we calculate our six trig functions? Our sine value, when, we, when our value was on the unit circle, our sine value was y. When we're not on the unit circle, it is y divided by the radius. Now, if our radius is one, that's a special case of this. So this, these formulas still work for the unit circle, okay? Now, cosine, is x over r. Now cosine was x when we were on the unit circle. Here you just divide it by the radius. And then looking at the reciprocal functions here, you can see that that is still holds. Okay. Now for tangent and cotangent, we know that cotangent needs to be the reciprocal of tangent. So let's not even worry about that right now. But let's do look at tangent because it does not have an r in it at all. We know that tangent is sine divided by cosine. And if I take y over r and divide it by x over r, you get y over r times r over x. Your radius cancels and you get y over x. So it ends up that for tangent and cotangent, it really doesn't matter how long your radius is. Okay, because you're still going to do y over x, x over y. Okay, so let's work a problem with this. A point on the terminal side of an angle theta in standard position is given. 
find the exact values of all six trigonometric functions. Okay, so I'm given the point negative 3, 5. Okay, and that means we need to find our radius. And the radius we get by x squared plus y squared and then take the square root. So this will be the square root of negative 3 squared plus 5 squared. The radius is the square root of 9 plus 25. And that is the square root of 34. Now I would simplify the square root of 34 if it did, but it doesn't. Okay? So now we're going to find our trig functions. So sine of theta is y over the radius. So this would be 5 over the square root of 34. And if you rationalize this by multiplying top and bottom by the square root of 34, you get that sine is 5 times the square root of 34 over 34. Now let's go ahead and find its reciprocal function. So cosecant of theta is the radius over y, or the reciprocal of this. And I do want to think about it here because it's not rationalized. And this gives me the square root of 34 over 5. And since our square root is in the numerator, we don't need to rationalize anything. Okay, now cosine of theta is x divided by the radius. So negative 3 divided by the square root of 34. And then if we rationalize this, we have the square root multiplying each by the square root of 34. You'll see that your cosine value is negative 3 times the square root of 34 over 34. And your reciprocal function, secant, is the reciprocal of cosine. And I'm coming back here because it's not rationalized yet. It works here, but you're going to have to rationalize again and then reduce the fraction. You get negative square root of 34 over 3. Okay, now tangent is y over x, so 5 over negative 3, so negative 5 thirds. And cotangent theta is x over y, so negative 3 fifths.